As Ireland's busy and prosperous second city, I had always assumed Cork ranked high in terms of tourism. But I recently discovered that isn't the case. It's nice to uh, contrast to Dublin because Dublin, where we were staying at, was very touristy. I hear it all the time, like 50 travel agents from Scandinavia, 20 travel agents from Germany hitting Ireland on a grand tour, but only a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage are hitting Cork. I said, I'd always come back from traveling, kind of saying, why don't we have this in Cork and why don't we have that in Cork? So I decided I'm going to take a bit of time out and I was going to do something about it. So I set up a website called Discovering Cork, purely initially as, a, as an information site for visitors. So to find stuff or find information because there was no website at the time where you could actually find that. So me, who's interested in travel, interested in geography and history and food and place, when I started digging around for this information in Cork, I realised all those things existed in abundance. But even me as a local who's actively interested, I didn't find it, a day didn't go by when I didn't say, Geez, I didn't know we had this. So I was shocked and pleasantly surprised and amazed that we had all of this huge natural resource, but nobody was telling the story of it. A team is an acronym for Tourism, Events, Arts and Marketing, set up in uh, the latter part of 2011. And it was largely uh, set up to deal uh, with the issue of tourism development in Cork. For many decades, indeed centuries, Cork has been uh, extraordinarily successful as a commercial entity and consequently when other locations in Ireland were grabbing the new opportunities of tourism in the 60s, places like Killarney, like Galway, Dingham, Kilkenny even to some extent and certainly Dublin uh, being the capital, uh, Cork was doing very nicely, thank you very much, and wasn't particularly interested in developing its tourism potential. But can Cork afford to be indifferent towards tourism today? While the city seems to be recovering from recession, the impact of austerity can still be seen. Tourists spent an average of €479 Euro in Ireland in 2014, and in the last five years, two-fifths of all jobs created were within the tourism and hospitality sector. The single biggest reason is that we don't tell anybody what Cork has to offer. So there is no single marketing campaign or marketing fund to promote Cork as a whole. That's the single biggest thing, we don't tell people. So there's a lack of communication. We tend to kind of say, geez, this is, this is great. We keep our cards close to our chest because if I'm doing something clever, I don't want you to know that I'm doing something clever. The, over the winter of 2014, 2015, we completely redesigned the Discovering Cork site new logos, new, new videos, new styling, everything. And we've made it much more of a, an actual tour operator, a travel agency, so that visitors who are coming in now, they can book a gourmet weekend, or they can book a family break, or they can book car hire, or if they need to get a chauffeur from the airport to their, to their meeting, we facilitate all of that through the Discovering Cork site now. Many people that I spoke to complained about a lack of activities. They said there wasn't enough organised events to keep tourists' interest in the city. You know, it's one of those chicken and egg situations. You can try and organise lots of different tours, but if there aren't enough tourists to fill them, the tours will peter out very quickly. And yet you won't get the tourists without the tours, so it becomes self-defeating. Um, what they're saying is generally right. What you would find is most towns in Ireland would be in a very similar situation. Dublin, Belfast would probably be two of the, the exceptions in that there's lots of evening tours, whether it's Dublin by night or Belfast by night or whatever else. Um, so they're the exceptions just by virtue of the fact that they have already the volume. We set up a Cork ghost tour at the start of the summer. 8 o'clock every night out of the city centre from outside the Opera House and it's an hour's walking tour, there's a bit of street theatre that you get 
kids and grandparents going along together and it's just a bit of street fun and it has been hugely successful. We do Cork Ghost Tour and I am the guide and uh, Noel there is uh, our ghost. The closet door opened up behind him and Mrs Bishop came out with a younger version of Mrs Bishop wearing that very same ruby red satin dress Amelia was now wearing. She crept towards the bed picked up a pillow and pressed it on Mr. Bishop's face. And there's old graveyards up there as well, and stories that go up there. The stories, they, we, when we found the stories, the stories are linked to certain areas. And Maltrams Hotel was the North Infirmary. <coughs> and Blackpool was famous for prostitution. And Mayfield, as you point to the distance, Mayfield was a leper colony. Valdi na Mucht. So like, Cork has a pretty sad and brutal history. They hung people, they quartered them, they drowned them, they burnt them, they put their heads on spikes at the edge of the city. And the first incidence of hygiene in Cork was they were bringing in milk in opal uh, churns and the blood from the heads was dripping into the milk and the people in the city complained about it. They should have just stirred it in. A bit of protein, get on with it. The hell with them softies. No vegetarians in that day. <laughs> Cork's Ghost Tour takes visitors on a fascinating journey off the beaten track to the north side of the city. It is an informative and entertaining account of Cork's lesser known history. On the night that I joined the tour, the reactions were positive, even if the turnout wasn't. We've done a few different tours and we're a really big history buff, so we wanted to do something that was kind of fun and creepy and, and different. Yeah. We love it. It's our favorite city so far that we've been to. Yeah, it definitely is. It was funny because it was actually the one stop we were going to cut out of our trip at the very end, and then we wound up following through and coming here, and so far it's we wish we had more days to stay here. It's been great. It's a step back in time. It really is. Um, we, we live in an age now where everything is just so technologically based. Uh, everything's brand new, everything's shiny, and you know, there's, there's no real cultural history behind it. Um, yeah, and that, that, that's, that's what it's all about. That, I think that's what we all seek as tourists, you know. One of the things that we had an abundance of Cork, but it was well below the radar, was the quality of our Irish tradition music offering. And what Team said about doing when it came into being was simply bringing what was already there uh, above uh, the parapet and showing what we had and what was an offer to the visitor. So the lease sessions was born. And last year, we had over 700 free sessions in about 25 different pubs uh, around the city centre. I won't give you the name of this particular pub that I'm about, about to talk about, but the owner recently uh, let us know that his takings were up 40% in the past three years. Now, by any stretch of the imagination, that is a phenomenal return. And he puts it down almost entirely to what they're offering now. They become much more tourist orientated. They are now marketing to specific target segments uh, and it is delivering handsomely from an economic point of view. So it simply goes to prove what Falta had been telling us through their national statistics that uh, about 75% of all overseas visitors to Ireland cite the Irish traditional cultural experience as a highlight. If you go to Bunratty, it's they have two shows seven nights a week, so they have fourteen shows a week just in Bunratty alone. Uh, Killarney has multiple show options every night. Dublin is just has about four or five Irish music show nights alone, in five, and they all running seven nights a week. Cork has one Irish music show that runs twice a week, and that's it. <laughs> Is my name. I'm the creator and producer of Pulses of Tradition. It's um, Cork City's celebration of Irish music, song and dance that takes place in Triscoll Christchurch um, every Thursday and Friday from June to September.
so I, and a lot of it too, like I find even for ourselves, um, a big part of it is that you know the bus tours uh, would land in Hawk Airport, go kiss the Blarney Stone and head straight for Kerry. Um, and again, because Kerry is so well um, geared up and is well catered so well for bus tours, for you know even with regard to parking and everything. Like there's very limited parking of buses in Cork City at the moment. I know, again, it's been looked at and it's, you know, but these kind of big decisions as regards city planning take a long time to actually come through. You know, there's a lot of discussion and a lot of things have to happen. So again, it, it'll be the same with the bus tours, but I think if, if the work, and if that get, you know, is done in the next year or so, it will have a huge benefit, not just for the likes of ourselves and courses of tradition and these sessions, but like for the whole city in general. If you have even five buses pulling up per day, that's 250 extra people strolling around in the city centre of Cork, looking to, to buy stuff, looking to go for, go for meals, looking for entertainment. You know, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer really as regards you know, going forward as regards you know, tourist destination, destination here in Cork. There's huge amounts of individuals or individual things happening, but it's trying to knit them together and to share that message. That's where the challenge is. There's lots of fantastic things all over the place. The uh, ecological purity of where a lot of our food comes from and the diversity of it. And anybody who's travelled abroad, you know, to the, the sunspots and that kind of stuff, the one thing that strikes you is how well uh, Irish food compares to it any cuisine in the world and how the ingredients and even the ingenuity of the chefs uh, that we have here in Cork is second to none and really far superior to, to uh, many others. Yeah, it's 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 really great, and the people are really friendly. Uh, I've just I've had like great ten minute conversations with with a bunch of people, and I really feel welcome. Uh, I was a bit worried that I mean we we are here on exchange, like people didn't want to get to know us, but we met some really nice Irish people that just like we were like we're going out, and they were like you can come with us, and I mean I haven't experienced that at any other place, so people are really really friendly. 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 Yeah. If you look at what the Lonely Planet has said, it's not actually comparing Cork with other places in Ireland. It's one of the top ten in the world to visit. The Huffington Post, in describing the ten uh, most undiscovered gems on the planet, again cited Cork. But maybe instead of continuing as an undiscovered gem, perhaps it's time to take a strategic look at marketing Cork. If the endless talents of its people were pooled together, they could create a city that no tourist would want to skip. 
international consultants have been brought in to decide, to, to define, with the with the input of various stakeholders, including ourselves, the coach companies, hotels, B and Bs, food companies, restaurants, and what have you, have all been come together over the last couple of months to put together a brief of what I see Cork and what you see as Cork and what someone else sees as Cork. And they're taking all of those messages together. And the next round of meetings is scheduled to take place very shortly. So that changing message is happening. Um, and that's why I get excited about car tourism because it is such a raw, untapped resource that where everybody will benefit. And everybody will benefit in due course as we kind of build, build those numbers. Yeah.